Hello again. We are Mark and Asya, and welcome back to part two of our trip around the Golden Triangle of India. In part one, we explored the iconic old town of Delhi, had a crazy train journey from Delhi to Agra, and made our way to the breathtaking site of the world's most famous building, the Taj Mahal. The Golden Triangle is the route between Delhi, Agra and Jaipur. So on the typical route, we would now be making our way to Jaipur. However, we have chosen to get somewhat off the beaten path. We are at Bharatpur train station on our way to Sawai Madapur, which is beside Ranthambur National Park, where we're going to do a safari tomorrow morning uh, and hopefully see tigers. By doing this, we have turned the Golden Triangle route into a diamond. And as it isn't as popular a route, getting to the town beside Ranthambur from Agra was a little bit tricky. As we said at the end of part one, our host in our accommodation in Agra helped us a lot. He told us to get the bus from Agra to Bharatpur and then hop on a train to Sawai Madapur. Yes, another train. But this time we managed to book tickets with seats, so it was actually pretty comfortable. In fact, all of our train journeys in India were fine once we figured out which carriages to book and how, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Ranthambore National Park is renowned for being the habitat of the majestic Royal Bengal Tigers. If you watched our Sri Lankan videos, you'll know that we were so excited to see our first big cat in the wild last month in Yala National Park, spotting Lucas the Leopard in an unforgettable moment on our Yala Safari journey. Ranthambore would be our second opportunity in quick succession to catch a glimpse of yet another big cat, but this time we'd be keeping an eye out for stripes instead of spots. We don't usually book tours on sites such as TripAdvisor or Get your guide as we like to do things as independently as we can. This time however we were conscious of our time constraints and we found a tour on Viator that tickled our fancy and to be honest we were really really impressed with the value for money we got. Amidst dense forests, lakes and ancient ruins we had the opportunity to try to witness these elusive creatures and their natural habitat. We were picked up at 6am in a canter outside our hotel. It looks like an open top mini lorry. And after picking up some other safari goers, we headed straight for the entrance to the park. These trucks are used to pick up people from their hotels in the morning and also do the safari in. So it's important to note that these are the vehicles in which you're going to be trying to spot the tigers in later in the day on the safari, so make sure to choose your seat wisely. Another option is to choose the Jeep Safari, or a Gypsy as they call it here. This is a vehicle that will only have between two and four people in it, so it's a bit more private. But to be honest, in hindsight, after we did the safari, we were very happy with the canter that we chose. Now, another thing you need to consider is which zone of Ranthambore you want to do your safari to into. Bear with us here as this can seem a wee bit complicated. Only 20% of Rathambor Park is open for tourism and that 20% is then split into 10 different zones and when you're booking your safari you will have to choose which zone you want to go into. Zones 1 to 6 are the best zones for tiger spotting and therefore are the most popular and therefore are the ones that are most likely to be booked out in advance. Apparently zones 3 and 4 are the most picturesque but we chose to do zone two because zones three and four were booked out when we were booking around about a week or so in advance. Once again, similar to our safari in Sri Lanka, we got extremely lucky. Around an hour into our safari, we looked over to our right and there, just walking elegantly through the forest was Nuri, a seven-year-old female tiger. We spent a few minutes just gazing at this majestic creature roaming around the jungle without a care in the world. Not to get too soppy, but these moments are truly why we travel so much. One thing we should mention is that even though we had a few moments with Nuri to ourselves, this is a busy park and the main attraction they sell to tourists is seeing tigers. So when word got out that there was a tiger close by, there were a lot of vehicles scrambling all around trying to see her. So funny, Mark said it's gonna be crazy here. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. We were the first Jeep to see the big cat and he was walking through the forest when we saw him. Now it's gotten a bit mental because people realize that there's a tiger here and there's loads of trucks that have come driving past us. But we were the best. Once again, I think I have the best picture I've ever gotten in my life. Yeah, it's so good. As for the rest of the safari, in all honesty, we didn't see much else except for some monkeys, deers, and birds. But those moments with Nuri made it more than worthwhile. Ranthambore was also the only place we visited in India 
that there wasn't an obscene amount of rubbish and that is something we really need to talk about. We have traveled to a lot of countries and we've seen our fair share of dirty places but India is a different kettle of fish entirely. We really aren't trying to be overly negative as that generally isn't the idea with these videos, but we just can't make this video without honing in on this subject a little bit. Delhi in particular was pretty bad in terms of the air pollution and um, even when it's a sunny day there, you can't really see the sun and you certainly don't have any chance of getting sunburned due to the low quality of air, which definitely can make you feel a bit uncomfortable. Anyway, we stayed in a place called Hotel Tiger Haveli the night before and after our safari and couldn't recommend it highly enough. Apart from anything else, the Rajasthani food we ate at the rooftop here was as good as any we tried in India. To get back on the more traditional Golden Triangle route, we took another train from Sawai Madapur to the city of Jaipur. This is third AC economy class. First time we had the general, which was a disaster. Second time then we had um, 2S and now we have third economy, so we really get a good grasp of how the train system works. We just had a bit of a debate Nasya thinks that we're gonna get a full berth that we can lie down on to ourselves on this carriage but I think we're just gonna have a seat to ourselves. I just can't imagine being able to lie down. Like. He was right, Asya. You're right. <laughs> Jaipur, the vibrant pink city of India, attracts visitors with its rich history and unique architecture. Renowned for its distinctive pinky orange colored buildings, Jaipur is a hotspot for cultural heritage. To see the city in all its glory, we hired a tuk tuk for 1500 rupees and spent the day exploring the city's most iconic buildings. Our first stop was at Hawa Mahal, also known as the Palace of Winds. This architectural marvel features a unique facade with intricately designed windows that historically allowed royal women to observe street festivities without being seen. One king had a lot of wives and he didn't want them to go out. That's why he made windows for them to look on the streets so nobody can see them from outside but they can see what's going on on the streets. Kind of sad. To get to this viewpoint, it's a good idea to go across the road and climb the stairs to get to Tattoo Cafe. After that, we made our way to Gator Palace, which is a cenotaph dedicated to the memory of the Maharajas, the founders and first rulers of Jaipur. I find Indian architecture like none other really doesn't look like anything else in the world and very very beautiful, I really like the details. These intricately crafted marble and sandstone structures showcase Rajput architecture and serve as elegant memorials within the beautiful setting of the surrounding hill sites. Next up was what is probably the main event in terms of sightseeing in Jaipur, a trip to Amber Palace. Amber Palace is a stunning fortress built with red sandstone and marble that started being built in the 1500s and wasn't completed until the 18th century. This palace and its surrounding walls were worth a trip to Jaipur alone just to see. It is an incredible sight. Really didn't expect to enjoy it as much. So gorgeous and this Great Wall of Jaipur around as well. Class. I'm pretty sure it's not called the Great Wall of Jaipur, as yet, but <laughs> kind of reminds us a bit of Patala Palace in Lhasa in Tibet, which is probably one of the most impressive buildings we've ever seen. So high praise. Goats should be one of everybody's favorite animals. They're absolutely hilarious. If you haven't looked up goat videos on YouTube, get on. <laughs> hilarious. Not far from Amber Palace is Panamina, an ancient water reservoir known for its unique and symmetrical stairways. It makes for some pretty quirky pictures and is well worth a visit too. Christopher Nolan was inspired by this architecture, filming The Dark Knight Rises, the prison, so, so cool to see it in real life. Finally, the last place we stopped to take a look was at Jal Mahal, otherwise known as Water Palace. Usually when they say Water Palace, you think that it's built on an island in the water or something like that, but this palace is literally in the water. We just finished our tour of Jaipur and we couldn't recommend Ali and Asif highly enough so if you come to Jaipur we'll put their number of their WhatsApp and their details below. Definitely 
these two boys and their tuk-tuk will take you to see everything you need to see. You might think that was a lot to squeeze into a day, but believe it or not, we left our apartment at 10 and we were back at two o'clock. So that was it. We were finished in Jaipur and we needed to get back to Delhi. And to do that, we took another train and another comfortable train journey because we got our host to book the train from Jaipur to Delhi first. If you want to book tickets on your own, you need a SIM card and we didn't have that. So luckily all of the hosts in our Airbnbs were more than accommodating and they helped us book proper train tickets with proper seats and carriage numbers uh, to make traveling around India very comfortable. The most important thing is that you really have to pre-book your tickets from one city to another if you want those comfortable carriages. And uh, we were booking ours through our hosts three to four days in advance. If you just rock up to the train station on the day, the likelihood of there being a carriage with a seat and getting a proper ticket is slim and you might have to squeeze into the whatever those carriages were at the back. So our opinion about India is a gray area. To say you love India it means that you accept all the rubbish and pollution and for us it's simply not acceptable in this day and age. Efforts from the government can and should be made to stop the just sheer amount of litter that is everywhere. So unfortunately that does stain our opinion of India a lot. There are so many good things about India and we really enjoyed our time there. Things like seeing the Taj Mahal, Princess Nuri. We also really enjoyed the walk around Jaipur and Old Delhi which actually was one of the cleanest places. But we just cannot turn the blind eye on the obvious pollution and rubbish problems. Because it's really something we care about and it has affected the way we see things here. Overall, we would definitely recommend coming here as it is a good experience. We visited India in the winter months and this is probably the best time to come because the temperature was really comfortable and it was nice to walk around without sweating. <laughs> For now though, we are currently in the middle of making a full Sri Lankan travel guide, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel to not miss out on that. In the meantime though, if you go to India, we're sure you're gonna have something to remember just like us.